Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, June 12th, approximately 12.30 p.m. This is a meeting of the Hadley Media Advisory Oversight Committee in Hadley, Massachusetts. We have a special guest with us this, evening, this, this afternoon, Town Administrator of the Town of Hadley, David Nixon. Welcome, David. Thank you. And Glad we, to be here. We are going to be talking, I, I think, first, if it's okay with the committee, or, or um, what should we start out with, folks? We're, we're going to be speaking with David about um, budgetary issues, revenues, and hopefully expenses. Um, is there any comments before we get into the financial discussion or uh, subjects? Should, 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 do you have any? Which you go first? Well, I, I think, we, get I think David's report. time is really valuable. Right. Okay. So why don't we take care of David? Okay. And then we can right. Go. Good. Should, should we take it that way, John? Sure. I have one okay. question. Well, uh, David, what is your interest? in raising revenues for this enterprise fund? Well, this is something that uh, I've heard from, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm happy to be here. The, uh, from time to time, I like to do a check-in with the committees and make sure that, uh, that your needs are being served and that the information that you've been gathering can be communicated to me straight to straight, straight from the people's mouths to the person's ear. Um, so I'm just doing a quick check-in to find out how are you doing, what are you up to, what results, if any, do you have, or what progress you've made on your various agendas. Um, revenues is something that we've talked about for a while. Who's we? We as in this committee, me uh, and uh, Drew. Uh, and Linda, the uh, treasurer, um, and I just wanted to find out if you thought about innovative ways of raising revenues beyond the interest that you earn from the the savings that you have accrued, which is about four hundred dollars per year, and the annual payment from the cable supplier, which is about. I want to say $69,000 a year. It could be off on that. We right. should be receiving a check very soon from them. Yeah, it should be uh, next week. Next week. If it's not here by Friday next, we should be, we should talk. Okay, so uh, David, you're asking um, about supplementary revenues to the standard uh, well, wait a minute. sources. Is that correct, John? Uh, so what you call this meeting and you mentioned re revenues to us, to all of us. What is your interest in raising revenues for this enterprise fund? My interest is I want to make sure the enterprise fund is solvent both in terms of its services that it provides and its finances. So um, you have one main source of revenue only. I know that uh, Drew has inquired about, uh, what is it, sponsorship? Un underwriting. Underwriting, okay. So we've had a number of conversations with Linda, the treasurer, and with the uh, Department of Revenue, uh, the attorney for the day, we posed some qu uh, questions about sponsorship. That attorney for the day has communicated back, which I think has been shared with you. I didn't know if there was anything else that we've been talking about. I'm not sure. I don't not. recall seeing that, but I can tell you, I read, I reread our contract with Charter, and then it stipulates quite clearly that raising um, money through sponsorships or underwriting is entirely appropriate if it follows the PBS model, but you cannot, it, it seems to say, and, I'll, and I need to re look at it closer, that you can't necessarily sponsor an individual program, but you can have general underwriting mm -hmm. of the station. Mm -hmm. And um, so that kind of confirms the conversations that you and I were already having and the conversations that, that you've relayed to me that you've had. Okay. So that I feel sounds, confident moving forward on that. Sounds like you need a copy of that email from the Department of Revenue, from Linda, actually. Okay. We've spoken to other... I would like to have a copy of it, too. I think it's And I may have a copy of that. I just... Yeah, if you get that out to the committee... Yeah, it was about a month ago that it was circulated, so... So uh, underwriting and sponsorships are definitely an, an option for us. Yeah. yeah. It seems like we need to approach this with some planning because the attorney for the day of the Department of Revenue said that there could be some uh, problems. Do we want to go in this direction or that direction? One tends to be more fraught than the other. Uh, so I don't know about that. That's interesting. Well, well, so well I would think it would be essential for this committee to be aware of that, what that attorney said. Yeah. I, 
I do believe that it went to the committee that I was CC'd. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I'll make sure that you all have that again. Thank you. So, so you're um, you're worried about the finances of this enterprise fund. I'm looking at the long-term solvency, both in terms of services and finances. The and best the, the projected expenses for the revolving fund exceed the annual contribution from Charter Communications. Yes, we'll be so, bankrupt in two or three years, the way things are now. All right, well, it sounds like we share the same concern then. We do, and uh, the interesting thing about it is that there are two ways to solve that problem. One is to increase revenue, and one is to reduce expense. And we were, the last time we met, David, uh, the clear indication was that uh, this would be addressed by the Board of Selectmen in the very near future, after the town meeting. Has there been any progress on that? Tonight I'm going to be meeting with the, uh, next week I'm going to be meeting with the, I'm meeting with them tonight, but next week I'm meeting with them with the purpose of opening up the warrant for the special town meeting. So that would begin the process of, of whatever the selectmen want to do with the Enterprise Fund for Hadley Media. Are we going to be there? That's are they enough. talking to you about it or are they talking to us about it? They're, they're going to be making decisions about the town meeting. And they're going to give deadlines for budget requests. Okay, this has nothing to do with the town meeting, David. This has to do with a discussion between the heavy media and the town with respect to the overhead charges. Those aren't necessarily town meeting items. Let's hit the restart button on this Please. conversation. I'm here to hear from you. It sounds like that uh, we're getting into a debate, and this is not what I wanted to spend my time well, doing. What, what I'd like you to hear so from I me. Would like, I would like to hear from you. So I would like you to hear from me that we've got to have that discussion that was promised uh, about the overhead charges. So obviously we all, sustainability here is going to depend largely on reducing our overhead charges as possible. I, th I think we all agree that we lost close to a third of our operating budget last fiscal year, or no, for, this, for this this current coming. fiscal year, and uh, ha that happening again would be uh, devastating. So one of the solutions we're exploring is working with other community access TV stations or groups of stations to reduce the overall overhead of, of the operation that we would be included in. So we've spoken to two, three, four um, other communities who have community access TV. Um, one of them in particular is um, seems open to the idea of bringing us in as one of their towns and uh, being able to share their operations, uh, um, including our, including our t with, with our town. So last year we saw virtually no support. In fact, we saw what might be termed true harm to the community access TV station here in Hadley by taking so much of our budget. Uh, if there are other priorities for the town, there's other priorities for the town. We can't control that. But um, we're definitely looking at giving up our independent Hadley community access TV station um, due to budgetary concerns and letting some other town or some other uh, group of towns uh, take care of running our, our filming of meetings and, and special projects and such. To me, that's not why I joined this volunteer committee. I'd like to see how they remain as independent as possible. It gives us flexibility, gives us educational opportunities, special projects, covering um, every meeting that we want to, or almost. Um, Drew's, I think, been doing a good job getting people out there covering meetings, can't do everything. But um, it's a viable option that we give up Hadley Media and make Hadley Media or Hadley's CATV operations um, under the umbrella of another group if the administration here in Hadley won't support an independent TV station. Maybe it's going to be a good thing if that has to happen. I don't know. I don't really have an opinion of which one's well, better could, or worse, but could, I definitely feel like an independent station's pre preferable. Could, could I rephrase that? Please, John. We, we've been talking to an outfit that does this, this what we're proposing for five other, for 
Four other. Four, four other towns. And in doing so, there are economies of scale that can uh, accrue to the benefit of the local town-run CATV station. And we're looking at, as David said, doing that as a possible solution here. Okay? And the advantage is that um, the overhead charges wouldn't be, they would, we would give up the fees, but they would take care of all the charges and just contract with us. They had the CATV station to do the duties that we tell them we want to have done. <coughs> okay. Is that fair? Yeah, and there'd be still some expense to the town, of course, but I no. think it would be far well, less. There, than well, the, the server would need to remain here. Yeah, right. So that costs electricity. Yeah, and we still own our cameras and all that. And um, it may be a better way of, of doing things, just to have more of, uh, you know, sp spreading out the, uh, the the overhead expenses. I don't know. I don't don't need a comment from you on this, David, but I'm just letting you know that we are looking into, we're also looking into the 501c3 option, which would be keeping an independent, or not independent, but hopefully keeping an independent TV station here, arm's length from the town, and seeing if we can't raise enough money privately with um, tax deductible donations uh, through underwriting and sponsorships that are support from Charter or Spectrum. Um, coupled with the uh, fundraising, could um, support the entire budget without hitting on the town at all. So if I remember correctly, and help me, you if I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, the town used to contribute, right? Like half of the previous station manager or director's salary came from public funding, right? The general fund, or I'm not sure how to talk about it, David, you do yeah, it. So, so the town used to contribute to the operation here, then that stopped due to, I guess, fiscal stress. Um, do you see that going back? I mean, is it possible to even it's, think about getting possible, town? It's possible to go back. Uh, it's one of the things that I have in the back of my head is that there aren't such things as taxpayer-supported uh, enterprise funds. Northampton has um, is a good example. Um, that's ultimately up for the select board and the townspeople to decide, uh, but that's one possible solution. Um, Let me interrupt. Just oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just, yeah. just a technicality, and I promise I won't get into the weeds on this one. Okay. Uh, some years back, the Department of Revenue decided that the, the, that uh, towns needed to set up either a special revenue account or an enterprise fund in order to manage. The, um, the funds that were coming in from Charter Communication or any other cable provider. Right, right. Um, they did this because apparently in the old days, uh, towns didn't need to go to town meeting in order to spend that money, and they were not Hadley, but other towns in the east were doing some pretty dodgy things with their money. Um, so the Department of Revenue tightened it up for everybody. Having created an enterprise fund, which at the time was the most sensible way to move forward, um, we need to be in that enterprise fund for three years before making some sort of change. That three years expires, so now we're in a place where we can be very flexible with with our funding strategy. When does, does it expire? Three, when does it expire? Three years from the beginning of it, and I think that's uh, like after next week or something right. like that. Oh, good. Have okay. we been an enterprise fund for three whole years? Yeah. Okay. Really? Could you email us that, Dave? Sure. So, David, uh, it's Appreciate good to hear you say what you're saying. Yeah, that uh, part. So, right now, the subscribers, pay the people that subscribe to cable TV, get um, are, are providing the funds that we get back from the cable TV mm -hmm. company. So the people that watch our meetings or our productions on YouTube or um, through our website um, or link through the town website are getting something for nothing if they're not charter subscribers. So we, I think I'm speaking for the committee, feel it's fair that anybody, who, that, that if, if our productions are really publicly accessible as they are now through YouTube primarily, then everybody should contribute a little something towards that access. They shouldn't just piggyback on the uh, free ride from the, the cable TV subscribers. 
So in my mind, just speaking for myself, it seems fair that if that um, all taxpayers or all viewers contribute something towards our production expenses here. So in my heart, I feel like for the town taxpayers to contribute something towards having access to cable TV productions is the right thing to do. It is fair. It's not fair to rely just on subscribers. And it's a lot to now to subscribe to cable TV. So that's just one thought, that I think um, contributing some public funds to support our uh, cable TV budget would be a good thing and might allow us to stay independent from control in other towns and all that. I, I think that um, would be a good thing. A good thing. I'd like to see go back to some contribution from the from the town general fund, even if it can't be can't be much, or from a taxpayer special fund or, or whatever you say. Now I assume that's a little bit different. It has to do with expenses, though, and yeah. uh, this is where David could really help me a lot. Um, when we were figuring out our budget for this year, um, the Goodwin was concerned that because we were moving in here, we were going to be uh, raising the electrical usage mm -hmm. quite a bit, mm -hmm. and so. Um, they said, well, we think it's going to be $330 a month. Mm -hmm. What I um, am curious about is how are we going to reconcile that? Because I know we're probably going to use closer to $50 a month of electricity. Yeah. So how do, we, how do we reconcile that? What's the practical way to do that? So I think that uh, the simple way would be to, um, now that you have some track record, we're not just, um, I'm guessing with where the electricity is going to go, but we have a track record. I think with that documentation, we can go back to the trustees and say this is what the apportionment should really should be, not you know, some place lower than, than comparing uh, the bills before, yeah, and after, right, right, and after. right, right. right. Use, use data right. in order to support your right. own argument. Because I don't see a copy of the electrical bill. That's I one agree. bill that doesn't come to my desk uh -huh. since it goes through. And Drew, uh, where can we get? Oh. You're going to need copies of the electrical bill. That's right. So where can Drew get copies? Should of I ask Mary Beth? Yeah, Mary Beth. Okay, all right. It came up at the library trustee meeting uh, last night that the uh, electrical bills were surprising or are surprisingly high right now, and everybody's wondering if it's because of having media's equipment. But well, so what's the when they say surprisingly high? I'm curious what the number is. I don't know the number. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there could have been a rate, a rate change, so you need to look at the yeah, it could be a lot of factors, hours. But uh, somebody suggested putting a meter, a meter on our equipment to see if it's actually. The well, I had actually proposed that we have we have a meter when we ordered the electrical work. Yep. We so we pro, we paid by the way, Hattie Media paid to increase the value of this building by upgrading the electrical to the tune of almost fourteen fifteen thousand dollars. And I had asked for a meter, a separate meter to be put in so we could actually track our usage. But for some reason, that was not put in. Right. And I'm glad it wasn't it because be the, electrical, the, the, pay, the, the amount of cost was far more than I anticipated. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I think we'll but um, it out. I, we have a road forward on this. I'm, I'm confident mm -hmm. if I talk to Mary Beth, we can, we can work this out. I just didn't know what the, the best way forward right, was. So, so I'm, I've heard, just to summarize, that there are two possible tracks here, one of which is that the, the you go independent from the town, that you join this consortium. No, no, that's a misunderstanding. We would not be independent. We would contract with somebody else to do the work. Just like we uh, contract with the accounting firm to do the accounting now. All right. Okay, we would still make, under the federal law, we're still... I thought you meant the 501c3 would be going independent. Well, we haven't talked about that yet, so okay, I'm, okay. Trying to, I'm trying to tease out the information. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you understand, Hadley Media would just contract right, so outsourcing. Just okay. outsourcing. Right. outsourcing. 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 Some sort of revision of the structure of the enterprise fund where taxpayer dollars are directly contributing to the operations and capital. Uh, and um, then the, uh, the third one was um, so 501 C3. That's basically it. And just the, um, well, there is another alternative to um, because the, the argument that we've had, and as in you're familiar with it, is that the ex, uh, the expense portion of you know the administrative overhead to, to our view is is, um, is is more than what we think is reasonable. Um, from what I understand, this past year the reason that it was so much higher was because we spent money in the past fiscal year on a lot of capital upgrades. And so the capital money that we spent is what you, you put it into 
added it to our operating budget or the, the revenue we received from Charter, Charter Spectrum and then counted that 154 as the basis for determining the, the overhead charge. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't have those sheets in front of me. But right. I'm yes, the, yes that's with... my understanding based on our meeting with David and Molly and, uh, and the Finance Committee Chair. Okay. So, um, so clearly we're not going to, Charter, according to our contract with Charter Spectrum, we received at the, the first year of the new contract $75,000, and then in the uh, beginning of the fourth year, $75,000. So the money from the first year that came in, Richard used a little bit of it when he was the uh, manager to purchase some gear, but he didn't spend very much. And then when I came in, I evaluated our operations and equipment and spent a considerable portion upgrading the server, buying new cameras, uh, a lot of gear. And so we're not going to have that kind of expense necessary. necessary. We don't have the money for it, for instance, uh, in any one year moving forward. In fact, uh, we're coming up on a 10-year capital plan that the that, um, that select board chair is looking for. And the, the previous capital plan that I had projected forward took basically the $75,000 that we hadn't received yet, and I apportioned it over 10 years, so $7,500 over each year. Yeah. But because it's because the money that we spend on capital in, a, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the formula that you're using, it gets pushed in with the op, what we've received as operating revenues, then that means that capital money, a portion of it is being taken away and it's no longer available for capital purchases. So I'm going to need to adjust my capital plan based upon that if, if that's how it's going to continue moving forward. Um, it says in the uh, Mass General Laws about uh, enterprise funds that it is entirely appropriate and for, for every year to basically negotiate with the select board and the town administrators a fair and reasonable <laughs> expense. And so I suppose I'm just wondering, is there, is there room there for us to have that that conversation and, and just reduce the expense that way. That's exactly my question, Drew. And that's how we left that last meeting we had up in the Selectman's office. Okay. Okay, that we would re address this after the town meeting. Okay. So that. Uh, okay. So let's right. ask David, how do you think we should best address this? Uh, have a conversation with the Select Board and you and maybe Finance Committee. Should we have a special meeting, invite them to one of our meetings? To yeah, meet during a select board meeting is yeah, not so I think So I think getting everybody together is always a good thing. Um, the, the, the rules by which the enterprise funds are assessed administrative charges have to be fair and consistent. So what we do for one, we have to do for water and sewer. Not necessarily. They have to be consistent from enterprise fund. To each, within an enterprise fund, they have to be consistent. Because What's the topic? To compare us with water and sewer is ridiculous. All right, so to have this have conversation. You have part-time employee. That's okay. it. So to have this kind of conversation about yes. what is fair and, and uh, how do things look as far as overhead charges go for next year? Is the town in better shape? You know, can they take a little less from us? Well, the, because the, the, cause to be clear, the, the, it's the overhead charges that are really the... That, that's the immediate issue that we're having. And the only but controllable issue. That the control, controllable issue. Right. Certainly, you're aware of the existential issue with cable um, and the FCC's proposed regulations. Right. And yeah, that, but the thing is, that's... And that's another th reason why I was thinking about right. having this meeting and right. starting the conversation. We can't control either of those things, but we can we control... To, so let's talk about the process. Yes. We so. can control the expense portion, and that's what we're not getting a direct answer from you. So, so let's. Uh, so David can't make decisions for the select board. No. So I think the important question is, what would be the process towards coming up with a budget, either for sustainability or to kick us out of town, or however you want to call it, um, an independent meeting, select board members, you, us, finance. I mean. Um, yeah, I mean, could you call getting, some? Getting people together is a good idea, and having people communicate. Uh, it's always a good idea. Okay, we don't want to waste time. If you tell me or you tell us, guys, next year is going to be worse than last year, it's not going to be a time to ask for a lighter uh, withdrawal from it, of overhead or whatever you want to call it. Um, then we have to be prepared for that. If you see yeah. hopefulness that the discussion will bear fruit, let's have it. Yeah. 
So I know that Christian Stanley, as chair, is, wants to have a meeting, and I think it's October, and I can get you the date, where they're talking about revenue projections for fiscal year 2021. How about expense projections? That's um, what our issue is. I'm, tell, I'm telling you what Christian wants. Uh, but you're also changing and I'll the be, subject. I'll be, meet, I'll be meeting with him a little bit later this afternoon, happy to report back to him the results of our conversation. But Christian was talking about looking at forecasting the revenues in October, FY 2021. Okay. All right. That's going to be very early, so the only broad brush strokes can be made at that point that you can rely upon with any degree of confidence. Okay. Um, but that would begin the conversation. Okay. So the select board is responsible for a lot of things in a, in the, all throughout the town. So we were promised that we could have a conversation after town meeting, mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't run into this uh, contentious. Yeah, this is part of part of why I'm here today. Thank you. Yes. So when so can, can we have that? Meeting? I think we could have a meeting this, you know, next month or something, or I don't know what their schedule's like right now, or should we contact Christian directly? I think it'd be better to get started on the conversation yeah. sooner because if we are going to contract and, and take a have a media outside, that will take some time to arrange. And, yeah, lab. so that'll take a few months to happen, so we need to be yeah. talking about this seriously now. Yeah. Um, I'll be meeting with Christian at 1.30 today in terms okay. of you're talking to Christian. I always think people have a right to talk to their elected officials, so that's not a problem. The elected officials um, don't always respond, but yes, I agree <laughs> with you. I reached out to Christian twice, but um, anyway, he's a good guy. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll make that contact. I think it'd be great to have... Um, at least a preliminary meeting, a pre-planning meeting, or whatever you want to call it. I also would Perhaps propose that we um, conduct a survey of other cable access stations about what their overhead charges are. And I understand that not every cable station is a municipal department, right. but for instance, I know Northampton, they only pay the electricity for where they are spaces. Okay, so let's not get, yeah, well, okay. but, I mean, but, well, but, but it, it would be interesting to see if, um, what what is considered? Yes, so we should do some research before that meeting. Yeah. I agree with you. Let me let me just cut to the chase. We can cut the administrative charges to zero, and it doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't. So it does not. What it problem does, does it not solve? Talking about the rising. The right, right now, you're locked in that four percent of gross revenues of uh, charter communication, and that's for the remaining. Years on That's the right. uh, on the contract. Okay. I want to say that takes us up to twenty twenty four. Yeah. All right. So. And that's enough to run the station. Um, well, it, term, it, well, the, term? The, 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 that if people are cord cutting, that will well, make well, it very well, hard. The, 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 that's true, but but right now for the next fiscal year or two, the expenses are the issue, and if you cut them to zero, we'd be no problem. At least we have some breathing room for the next well, couple of years. Well, I think that, and David rightly wanted to talk about revenue enhancement yeah. because that is part of, so the sponsorship or underwriting portion, I think, is something that um, last year when I spoke to the finance committee and we were talking about enhanced revenues, I thought that we already had started pursuing underwriting. We have now found out officially that it's it's appropriate. There are some areas that you were saying that are fraught based upon how yeah, it's done, we need to, and we need so to do some planning. so that so I don't want to just rush out there and get underwriting until we're until we're certain that it's actually wise. Right. Um, but I, but I think well, that's. I'm the, also not interested in going out and getting underwriting unless we keep. If we get a hundred dollars worth of underwriting, we keep a hundred dollars worth of underwriting. So we not pray, use it to subsidize the general fund. So do you? Wait a minute. From what wait. You, so why don't you say it in a more co uh, collegial way, John? How would you if we it? raise money, are we allowed to keep the money we raise? Well, is your understanding well, so far? The enterprise fund, that's the way it works. Is that whatever the enterprise fund where it generates in the way of revenue, it keeps within, within the enterprise fund. That's why we chose the enterprise fund as the, as the best financial management tool to handle. Right. But, would, media but, but would, we have, would we have to estimate and would we have to tell donors that you can expect a quarter to a third of your donation to go back to the town for overhead? Or would that be um, separate from that charge? Or maybe it's too early to no, tell them. Let them answer. You understand my question, right? Yeah. If you tell a donor, if you give 100 bucks, it's going to go towards our production. Or we tell a donor, if you give 100 bucks, we'll keep about three quarters to two thirds of it and the rest will go to the town. We have, you know, 
you have to be careful with that stuff. I think it depends on how you package it. If it's the donor gives it as a gift, it goes entirely to whatever the purpose of the gift is. Oh, good. Uh, I was afraid it's not it was a gift. It's a sponsor. It's a gift. It depends, depends, on, on, depends on how you package it. Well, that's, so that's something to look into. That's something to look into. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear because that's how I don't mind fundraising. I don't mind going for sponsorship if I'm allowed to. But I have. Yeah. I want to feel comfortable telling donors that um, their money stays where you think it's going. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's very helpful. All right. So we're going to put together some research to see how other we've already started. Um, we're going to continue to look how other stations are, um, what do you call it, um, adding to their revenue um, sources and uh, we'll continue, I guess, discussion to see if working with another town under contract would make sense. We'll do a little more research on the 501. I don't think the 501 is anything mysterious about it. And, 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 and another option. would have to agree, I think. Another option you've brought up before, Friends of Happy Media. Right, we could set up a friends group and yep. do the fundraising that's through that. A, that's like, a very smart thing. Like to the do. library, yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy. So thank you. If you have other ideas, or you hear from other towns, I don't know if there's a blog or a bulletin board for town administrators, or um, I know Drew talks to other cable TV, but um, if any help you can offer us on how towns are able to alleviate the burden from yeah. uh, survival. So thinking but, about FY 2021, that puts us in that three-year window for renegotiating the contract for 24. Um, so, oh my God, it's already coming up. It's coming up already. So we are going to need to have a um, committee. cable yeah. uh, committee. Just um, what's what's the name of it? The assessment. The assessment. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's the town-wide assessment type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have to do an ascertainment process. and. Um, Entertainment service. And to start negotiating the That's next contract. Right, yeah. Okay. And, and we have copies of the old entertainment mm -hmm. surveys and stuff, but uh, yeah. I don't know how that would work. I'm actually very curious about how the public feels that we're doing compared to the, the last entertainment. Yeah. It's so, hard, you know, we did a uh, paper survey at town meeting, we got 50 or 60 responses. It was a hint. We have a web uh, on our website, folks. There's um, a survey you can take to let Hadley Media know how it's doing. I think we've had two people in six months actually do the survey. So if you want better TV, let us know how we can uh, better serve you, please. So the ascertainment, not mm -hmm. the assessment. The right. ascertainment right. is uh, a lengthy process. Uh, last time we did it with the help of an attorney, uh, uh, William Solomon, Bill Solomon. Bill Solomon. That's right. Uh, don't have to go with him, but that's well, one option. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of work, and so that's another thing that we should start talking about with the select board. Regardless of the funding mechanism for Hadley Media, is how do we want to approach the next contract, particularly given the, the changing uh, regulatory right. environment that we've operated? So, Drew, I uh, can I ask you, mm -hmm. is it normal to expect you to work with David on getting the ascertainment survey understood, or at least... Um, mm -hmm. Well, I will... I will with that? Um, typically, um, this that is done outside of the actual station. So, but, the, the, and, and the, the, so the station manager is a resource for whatever committee is put in charge of doing that. Uh -huh. um, but that's... An Committee's in, independent. It's independent. Okay, that's the kind of information I guess we need. I think I might have been on that 20 years ago, that committee with Susan Woods, and was this, were you here then, or was that Robin, I can't remember. Probably 20 years ago would have been Robin. Or 15 years, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I very vaguely remember it, but um, yeah, let's not get caught with our pants down. Well, yeah, we don't want to wait till the last minute, to, yeah. but with, certainly with this <coughs> FCC stuff hanging over our heads, and they have, they don't have to make any kind of ruling until they want to make one, and so we're just, it's like the sort of Damocles hanging over us right now. Yeah. Uh, is there any question? Well, it's I mean, it's hanging over every station. That's so, right. Absolutely. So, uh, might, there, might, might there be a question that we want to renew at all, or do we definitely want to try to renew with charter? Spectrum. Boy. Anyway, just a thought. I think it's way too early to find. Uh, okay. I mean, there's so much going on at the federal level mm -hmm. that I, th right. I think it's very early for us to... to Right. Speculate. If any uh, friends, if anybody's actually listening, we're talking about 
uh, cable TV long term here and that their Federal Communication Commission is making certain moves that will make it more difficult for cable TV stations to serve local communities and support community access television. So it's very serious stuff. It's been going on for a while. Uh, the community access TV stations are lobbying to keep our funding. There's other forces out there, bigger than we are, that are um, lobbying to, to cut that funding. So cable TV may in fact be going away if, um, if, if there's not a uh, public outcry. There's a countervailing uh, issue though, and that is that uh, Congress is this week holding hearings about the essentially the demise or total shrinkage of local coverage of government mm -hmm. and um, local access to cable TV is one way, way to solve that problem. Right. So this will be this will weigh itself. But that may be an opportunity then for enhancing revenues because if we're filling a void and there's a value associated with filling that void, how do we monetize that? Right. Well, the, the newspapers... The newspapers aren't able to because they're not selling that advertising. Right. We'll let David go here right. if, he, okay. if he feels comfortable. Thank you so but I do much. have one question for you. And I have one, one last thing to please. talk about, but it just takes a second. What's the question? My question is, um, would you please think about how we would approach the taxpayers at town meeting, I suppose, to see if they are interested in supporting cable access TV station uh, more than they already do. So right now the subscribers provide the funding. Um, would the citizens like to contribute something, even if it was a very small amount? I think this is the taxpayer enterprise fund idea. How would we package that and put it in front of the voters for a, a yay or nay type of vote? It may go down, or people might say, of course I'll contribute well, 20 bucks a well, year to what, it. What, what did we board. find out what a taxpayer, yeah. what did you call it, David? Taxpayer Enterprise Fund? Taxpayer Funded Enterprise Fund? Oh yeah, Taxpayer Funded Enterprise Fund. When are we, where can we find out about that? Well, as you said, <laughs> Northampton has one, uh, but the Department of Revenue uh, has a manual. If you go on their uh, on their website, uh, to the Division of Local Services, right? Okay. Uh, look, type in the search and uh, search for Enterprise Fund. It'll direct you to that manual, and that manual will describe all the details that you'll ever want to know. Oh, Can yeah, I send that to the you? The taxpayer way, fund. Oh, I, I'm very familiar with that manual. Okay. Um, but I didn't see anything about a taxpayer-funded enterprise fund. Uh, it helped me. It's in the early part of the it's, manual. It talks okay. about the different kinds of enterprise funds. Whether you're also whether you're running if it needs to be subsidized. It's basically it shows what uh, it, it shows three types of um, Account. budgets. Account. So budget surplus, um, and budget sh uh, shortage, and. Uh, yeah, but this has to do with the tax, the, the source of the revenue. And the, the suggestion is that it comes from the tax, taxpayers? Is that that's one form. The tax revenue? That's a... Real what, estate tax or is it a separate assessment? It would be an appropriation at town meeting. From the general fund. From the general fund? Yeah. Or w it wouldn't be an assessment on the bill? Not, in this, not a set aside special assessment on the bill. It would be part of the overall uh, tax bill. Okay, that might be more palatable than thinking about adding to the tax burden. Yeah. Okay, thank you. What was the subject you wanted to... Uh, I just wanted to talk about the construction projects. So tonight Arty. the select board are going to issue the... or I'm going to ask them to note, issue the notice to proceed for the new library and for the fire substation. The senior center is already underway. Um, Demolition of the um, of the senior center is going to impact parking here at uh, Goodwill Memorial Library. David, you sit on both uh, uh, as a trustee as well as a member of this committee. So may I rely upon you to do that integration of okay? So this is what the project is going to look like when it moves forward. How might it impact, if at all, Hadley Media? There be days when this building be shut down. Uh, what I don't know. Right. So the town is. It's not just during the demolition of Hooker. It's during the construction. So last night at the library trustees meeting, this came up that there we've been warned, or the town's been warned, that both driveways, the one that's uh, I'll call it the circle around the Hooker School, which includes the library uh, driveway, may be closed at times one at a time or both all together. So it's a problem for town employees, it's a, town, it's a problem for patrons to the library, it's a problem for deliveries. 
So at the library trustee meeting, we said, well, we hope that the um, project managers are going to work closely with the construction companies to minimize uh, the closure of parking spaces at the library. We were speaking as library trustees in particular. And um, employees sometimes have to park farther away. They are uh, prepared to do that. We're worried about, I'm talking about the library now. We're talking, uh, these guys, we don't care where they park. <laughs> so Drew and John, our two employees, will be, uh, be able to park. We have so few visitors here, David, I don't think we have to even address that as a mm -hmm. separate problem if that's what you're hitting at. You don't get deliveries or anything. Mm -hmm. So the library, I think whatever solutions are good enough for the library will be good enough for having media. And okay. I, I worry about it. Um, so we all see downtown construction in Boston or New York or wherever we were, or Virginia or Maryland. Um, Clever construction managers are work miracles with keeping people, you know, keeping buildings accessible during construction. Right. So I'm pretty confident they'll be able to, there's a lot of space here, mm -hmm. that the uh, library and Hadley Media will not be um, isolated. And we are talking about a home delivery for books, picking up and dropping off books. So if uh, some seniors are, are in particular have trouble driving and are nervous about driving through a construction site, the library hopes to have a service or we're going to uh, have people sign up to ask for mm -hmm. delivery and, uh, and retrieval of books as necessary too. David, how long does this process expect it to take place with the demolition and the reconstruction? With the construction? Don't hold me to this because I haven't seen it uh, scheduled okay. uh, recently and this will be something that the OPM develops with the general contractor right. once the notice to proceed is issued. Uh, but typically these things take uh, 18 months. Okay. Right. Yeah. There may be times when this building would be closed, uh, particularly during the demolition part. Right. Well, I can do most of my work remotely, so that's not a huge issue. Yeah. It's just moving gear in and out in order to film. We may yeah. have to store more. So, to answer your right. question, yes, let me know anything I can do to be helpful in communicating yeah. this. Obviously, I don't control the situation, but yeah. happy to contribute. Same here. I'm just asking you to wear two hats when you're with the library. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us, You're David. You're quite welcome. Thank you very much for the, uh, the update. I found it valuable. Uh, and I'll be meeting with Christian Stanley this afternoon, and we'll talk about the next steps. And David, whatever scrappiness you're hearing from us, it's just because we're trying to... We just live in New England. That's <laughs> part of it. And part of it is we do believe that community access TV is important for democracy and for an informed population, voter population. Yeah. So we hope we have your support and the select board's support, financial support, as, as possible. Um, I'm sure the town's under a lot of pressure, and I'm sure you're trying to make cuts and find efficiencies every way you can. But um, I'm worried that uh, revenues alone aren't going to make it. We have to find other efficiencies somewhere, I think, over the coming years. Mm -hmm. So not an easy job. I don't envy you. <laughs> it's... Uh, and the select board volunteer, you know, I don't know if we have any professional project managers on the select board, but uh, it's a tough situation. But we think if you get projects, you want to have initiatives, and the select board wants to have initiatives understood and, and supported by the voter population, I can think of no communication channel more important than, uh, than cable TV. So we hope, yeah, we have your support. Okay, great. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. And we should do a Hadley report uh, before too long. We had uh, yes. done one of those since before town meeting. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and as somebody who has uh, created the only, so to the best of my knowledge, the only communication plan for the municipality in Massachusetts, um, you know, obviously I'm in support of your mission and that uh, getting the word out to the public is vitally important. Yeah. To, making sure that uh, Hadley is a great place to visit or right. live. Open town meeting is a strange beast. It can go well or, or not so well. So yeah. getting, people, getting people ready for meeting is a big thing. Could I ask a question in connection with the Hadley report? Would it be helpful to you if we had you uh, interviewed? Would it make it easier for you to prepare for the thing instead of being there on the camera all, all by yourself? You mean doing questions and answers rather no, than... No, uh, just being interviewed. Oh. Well, I, I mean, you, 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 the interviewer would ask you to tell us what's going on, but it wouldn't ask you a pointed question. It would be just... 
Yeah, so, I mean, I don't, I'm open to an We could try it? Could we try it? We've done it before. C could we try it? We've done it before. That doesn't answer my question. Can we try it in the future? Uh, yes, if, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, um, great. But I think the uh, focused report is the next part of this, particularly if, since we're gearing up for the bond credit rating site mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And we have a lot of information to share that uh, people will find helpful. So are you... Um, okay, that would be, uh, that would not be Hadley, uh, the Hadley report, that would be a specific topic, the, the way I look at it. Okay, whatever. Well, that, I'll come by and talk to you. Um, th uh, Friday afternoon you're around. I know that's when you need to yeah, have... Not this Friday. Not this Friday? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you soon, and we'll yeah. work. we'll get it done. Okay. Good. Thank enough. you. Not next Friday either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, think about it. Okay. I'll, I'll be in touch, David. All right, okay. folks. Thank you. Thank you, so David. Much. Thank you for coming. Found it valuable. Okay. So we look forward to having some kind of meeting to get started on that. Yeah, like I said. Budget. Okay. I have to talk to Christian. Thank you. There's a lot. I'm going to just uh, move. Okay. There's a lot going on, and it all has to happen. Director's report. Okay, so our biggest issue that we're facing right now is our live stream is failing to stream properly, and we're troubleshooting that. As right now, John is upstairs working on it. Um, I discovered the issue at the graduation that it wasn't working, and I asked John to look into it. Um, so to put this in layman's terms, this means that we are at a remote location trying to put our production right on, on right on the YouTube live. immediately live real time. It's not working. It's not working. And the, th the thing is, is that so we have the live stream box. It's designed for this purpose and as a switcher. And, and it's, it's been working. It's been working, and it says it's streaming. But then when you go to our website, you have to go to the URL that it tells us it's at. It says that it's not. So we don't know if it's a YouTube issue or if it's a live stream issue. And so right now we're troubleshooting. And apparently a lot of other people are having problems with this. I don't know if YouTube has changed the, the codecs that they're using or if Livestream itself has, Livestream itself offers um, premium services. And it may be that because we are just using the, the Livestream itself but not paying for the premium services, there might be some some glitch that we don't. So you're working on a solution. I am, I am working on a solution. Good luck with that. It's a, it just, uh, yeah. It sometimes boggles the mind how something technical can be such a pain. Well, Livestream makes their money by providing this ability. So That's if right. we don't have the ability, right. they can have their machine back. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, okay, um, thank you. Other than that, uh, it's, you know, we're chugging along. I mean, things are going relatively well. Okay, it's, no problems. We just, we're, yeah, we're filming meetings, and we're, we just had the groundbreaking we filmed last week, and we had the Historical Society had a uh, meeting on Sunday that was filmed, and uh, there was a select board meeting tonight that's being filmed, so we're just continuing to chug along. Okay. When is the demolition of the uh, uh, school? I don't think they've uh, given the, the contract out yet, well, so I don't know. I don't know the exact date. I had I written down in my calendar. The exact date. I, I don't remember. Okay. John, I'm sorry. He's yeah. going to be here soon, I can tell you that. Okay. Uh, and yeah. I hadn't even thought about the fact that we may not be have access to this building. Um, so it's good that we're able to... That's the first I've heard of that. I've yeah. heard that we might lose parking. Yeah. And we may have to park it. We'll park on the tree. Because we need to, well, but the thing is, if they're not going to let us in the building, we really need to know it in advance because if we do need any gear to film something, right. we need to find a place to put I'm it. I'm sure yeah. they'll let you know. So yeah. It, it would be just, it, yeah. it's not going to take them more than a day to demolish it. Yeah. Right. Okay. John, you had something to add? Yes. Yes. I'm on the hook for uh, giving one of the selectmen um, a. Uh, our little rundown of the advantages of going of contracting with another 501c3, and uh, but to be effective, uh, and we have a quorum, it would be neat if we could get a vote on the points here. Not that we're going to do it, but just these are the points. I think you have this. Okay. Over. May I read this um, out loud, John? Yeah. yeah. 
All right, this is regarding contracting Hadley's Community Access TV station services to another uh, CATV organization. The cost of doing business in Hadley for our community access television station is unsustainable and higher than any station in the area. The contract Hadley has with Charter requires it to manage the CATV station and the best way to do that appears now to be to contract out the operation to a separate, independent, non-profit corporation with a record of success and accomplishment. We have opened up preliminary discussion with Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT, and they are interested in hearing more. FCAT currently handles the local cable coverage for four towns. That they might be interested in expanding to Hadley. The base of operations is in Sunderland. It's actually in Sunderland Town Hall. The advantages are many. Through economies of scale, operational costs could be reduced. The cost savings would be translated into a enhancements in local coverage. With a reduction in overhead charges, better service can be provided with the cable fees we currently receive. There would be no need to expend our reserves just to stay open, allowing the reserves to be used for their intended purpose, keeping our equipment up to date in a field of rapidly changing technology. There would be relief on Hadley's own budget by eliminating about $22,000 in expense. There would be no need to consume any time of the already committed town administrator, of the already overcommitted town administrator. FCAT can work with our existing staff. FCAT feels that a properly run station focusing on local and regional topics of interest to viewers can survive current external threats from cable cutting and a possible adverse FCC ruling favoring cable companies over local stations. A larger pool of camera operators might be available to draw on when needed. Local businesses could sponsor programs or local sports through tax-deductible contributions. By going out to bid periodically, Hadley could keep costs down and quality up. This is the practice in other towns. No other alternative offers these advantages, so we suggest the select board set up a subcommittee to work with the Cable Advisory Committee to see if this alternative with FCAT can work. Okay, so may I say something? Uh, actually, yes, but um, any comments from the committee before I ask you to go ahead? Um, so, John, you wrote this up, correct? And this was because the selectmen's interested in exploring this opportunity. No, I wrote this up uh, weeks before I met with the selectmen. Okay. And I gave it to the cable advisory committee okay. for comment. Right. And, and all I'm, all, the selectmen asked that just to make sure that he knows that the committee is aware of this. Okay. That we vote on. So uh, what I'm and not that we're going to actually make the right. Right. So on uh, these bullets. Um, are likely to be true, and I believe they're all probably correct. Um, there's going to be different opinions on how much and the, course, the specifics. Just but just to, just the purpose of this is to encourage the select board to set up a subcommittee to work with us to explore working with FCAT or another contractor in a uh, business-like manner. That's the purpose of uh, what we're well, doing here. Well, this may start the process. Okay. One outcome may be that we do this. Another outcome may be that we set up our own 501c3. Right. Another okay. outcome may be that the town okay. underwrites it through taxation. Okay. So, Drew, forgive me. The, the reason I'm, I was concerned is that I don't want to tear up. Right. I'm not. I only have yes veracity in each particular bullet. No, no, I'm not. I'm okay. not going to do that. Okay. Right. I'm looking at the very first sentence, though. The cost of doing business in Hadley for our community access television station is unsustainable and higher than any station in the area. Yeah, that's not correct, actually, right? It's, it is correct, isn't it? Per, what's per your question? viewer? What's your question? Well, it's not correct. Uh, the, the way it's written, it's, like, it's not correct. Like Northampton has a bigger budget. I mean, every other, we have, one, we have the lowest cost, of, uh, compared, except for maybe Hatfield. What did you mean, Jeff? So, if, if you're talking about the overcharge, the, the administrative charge, it's the highest. But the actual cost is not the highest. Okay. What did you mean? That's what I mean. Okay, so I think that needs to be clarified. Okay, because how, would then, thank you. how would you clarify? Okay, the, the, uh, how about the administrative overhead charges? Charges. Uh, 
Because that's really the issue. That time again, that is the number one issue. Okay. Um, okay. The the administrative charges expensed to Hadley of Meat Hadley Media. So I would say the town of Hadley takes a higher percentage okay. of our operating budget than any other town. True. How about if we said? The cost of doing business in Hadley for our community access television station is unsustainable, and the higher and the overhead charges are higher than any other station in the area. Yeah, I, th I, I don't like that because the cost of doing business that's not yeah, what okay. we're talking about. We're actually pretty efficient here. Mm -hmm. but no, the cost of doing business in Hadley is unsustainable. So let's because of the uh, withdrawal yeah. of the overhead charges. Right. So that's what we have to right. say. That's I don't want to make it sound like we're paying our people too much right. or our accountants. And that's, and that's why I like, draw attention to that. And it's sustainable that. because of the overhead charge. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is, is that okay? Yeah. Because of the current overhead charge. Right? Yes. That's right. Okay, so the uh, fundamental purpose well, of the, this... Did you hear, by the way, David said at this meeting that he could reduce the expense to zero. They have the wherewithal to do that. Well, they do, but it was it was hyperbole. Yeah. It was or hypothetical. Yeah. But the, but the fact is is that there is well within their purview to reduce the charges. Okay. So the charges are they're not entirely arbitrary. He's trying to say that he's using the same formula for every enterprise fund. You can't do that. Yeah. All right. So I'll, let's stay on topic. If you want, we can go back to the okay. meeting with David if you wish. Um, so the well, you'd like to vote on this so that just, we can just satisfy the select person. Okay. And then, get, this will get, then get to the board of select them through okay. the select. Them. Glenn, are you comfortable with this? So the purpose yeah, is I just think to it's get a good a, idea to get the, get this off the ground. Yeah. Okay. And I, I would I would make the motion to. Okay. I'll second. Any other discussion? And again, I'll just mention that the specifics are less important than getting the process going here. How does this select board want to work with Hadley Media to explore contracting? Okay, so may I have a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Uh, Linda Castronovo is not with us today, but um, she will be kept informed on this and uh, be asked for comment. And this is a month, multi, multi-month process to explore contracting out. Right. As Glenn pointed out, this gets it started. Yeah, gets right. it started. Anything else, folks? I would just say it as an aside, as I was listening to David talk, or do David, you and David talk together. I think it would be um, uh, effective if the board of selectmen and I didn't think to mention it uh, that the board of selectmen set up a subcommittee so that these issues can be discussed around the table like this, not on camera with five people, but the, the subcommittee could bring the issues to the whole right. board and at the right time. I agree, and I think that's part of the, what will be a result of this, is that why well, would we need to go out and contract our service? Well, because the overhead charge is so high. Well, what if we reduce your overhead charges? Great, we could keep it all right here in Hadley. Yes. So um, that's I think, would be a very nice... Uh, and, and what's crazy is our budget is so small, the amount that they take from us is just a thimble. You know, but it affects us so Drew, much. Drew, I did yeah. something interesting that I couldn't resist. I, I, I got an Excel budget. and I said, "This is the um, this is the town budget." And I guessed it was fourteen million. I yeah. think it's higher than that. But I said it's fourteen million. And if David Nixon was talking about us doubling our revenues from sixty-eight thousand to twice that. The increase of sixty-eight thousand compared to the fourteen million is like I, I can't remember how many decimal places it is, but you're right. It's less than it's about a half a percent. And then, so that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of dumbfounded that we have to go through an arduous process right. and typically so late in the budget process. It's a half right. a percent. Um, the one thing is in that packet that I sent you about the enterprise funds. They're looking at it should be based upon actual expenses. And we should actually be uh, expensed every month what the administrative charges are, not in one fell swoop where it's all of a sudden, oh, well, now we're screwed. All right, but that's an accounting issue. That's, that's an accounting helpful. issue. That's helpful. The we should real that's issue important. is that we're being charged. For, I'll give you an example. I think in his application of his formula, which is a good formula, it's used throughout the state, but his application of the formula 
has uh, the enterprise funds, water, sewer, and heavy media, being charged for things that we don't use. Right. And one of the points that was made in my telephone interviews with people around the state was that the, the town can't charge an enterprise fund for things that they would already have to pay for anyway. For example, the overhead of the town hall building. Right. The, the, they right. would pay for that whether we exist or not, and, in, and, and whether water or sewer exists. And, or and not. quite frankly, when I look at so David and I were going to write up a con, so this is the David pros. Was, was, David Moskin, yeah. we were going to write up the cons, and of cons of of going to an outside uh, source for providing the cable access, because the town is looking at it, or at least the argument seems to be, well, we have this expense. And what I say is that if we weren't here, you would have the exact same expense because we actually don't add to the expense. <coughs> right. We are subsidizing the cost. You're using an unused That's space. not an actual expense. Right. So that's why I feel it's an error the way we've been charged. That's what we tried to get across to uh, one of the selectmen in the finance committee and David Nixon when we met in the... Right. And now they said, well, let's put it off to next year probably. No, yeah. they said put it off until the summer. And that's why... Well, I, we're here now. That's why I zeroed in on that question. And, and let's not forget, I'm sorry to repeat, but um, there's how many subscribe, charter subscribers in Hadley? 1,500 more or less? Mm -hmm. And they're supporting 100% of the expense for over 5,000 people. Well, there are usually three people per subscriber, because most homes have more than one person watching the show, TV. Uh, but one person still, pays the bill. That's one right. person writes so, the check. So those 1,500 people that are the check writers, are, are paying for the 3,500 people that live in town that, that watch okay. me or whatever. Right. Anyway, so the town shouldn't just rely on that. Luckily, we can't easily contact subscribers. But. That brings up a question that I have that's been up on most of my mind. I, I realize maybe you've discussed it before, but on that survey of the people that watch Hadley Cable Television, has that ever been clarified to an extent as to how many people watch it? We don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, what's, what's sad, Glenn, is that um, the, the Nielsen Company, which does all the ratings for what yeah. people watch, they will not count cable access stations, even no, if you... we were going to do it as a group here okay. at one have, time. Right. I, I, no, so at town meeting last year, there, were, there was a survey that was sent out that David created, and people answered it. This past year, the most recent town meeting, we did not have that survey put out there. But uh, David Nixon brought up the ascertainment survey, which is actually going to be coming up pretty soon. I wasn't aware of how fast time flies. Yeah, because, um, because we do need to find out. We don't know. Because to get more money from people that aren't cable subscribers, right. they're not going to contribute if they never watch it. Right, that's right. Well, the thing is, is, do they watch it on YouTube? We can track YouTube usage. Yeah. We just can't track the number so Glenn, of people that yeah. watch. So how do we, uh, how do we, know, we find that out? We don't do know do we know what our YouTube usage was last month or this month? Well, I don't know offhand. I could, John Harrison could look it up and see how many people watched individual meetings. And usually yeah. it's about 30 to 60 people watch a meeting. Well, so so that, I'm talking, Glenn's talking about what's, what's the viewership. Yeah. Can we add those together for a month and see what, how many people are watching this? Well, the, I'm not sure if that's an accurate figure right. because what if you count the same person multiple times because they because right. you have the same 30 people watching okay. every meeting. So we describe it as how many hits we have. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so we get that. So yeah. So that would be a good yeah. start, so, wouldn't it? Yeah, I would think so. So Glenn, to find out what we really want to know isn't just how many people are watching; <coughs> it's how many people would support. Financial, financially right supporting point. the station. Yeah. So that could, would happen at a town meeting vote. Would yes. you guys like to set up an enterprise fund and contribute to I, it? I, I personally can't see people that don't subscribe to cable TV Agreed supporting it. Right. I can't see it. I can't either. And, and unless they're used be... to watching the meetings online, and, which and, and the streaming is so critical to. To, to me, it's setting up um, the, the wrong question. The, the real question is, does the town want to have its governmental meetings and other official events available to the public? That's the big issue. And, and if, if they say yes, the answer is yes, then the question is, 
how do we best do it? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I think that's and if you're right, Len, if the people who aren't already cable subscribers that are used to getting it for free yeah. aren't going to contribute to it, it's gone. It's going to be gone from Hadley. You know, somebody well, else will be in charge. Probably. Well, or you reduce services. I mean, or you reduce services. Well, yeah. I, I, th I think we have to look at it uh, not like a people looking at it 365 days a year, but a bunch of people looking at the graduation. Right. A different bunch of people perhaps looking at the parade. Mm -hmm. yeah. A different yeah. group, group of people watching the selectmen's meeting. Or yeah, the, and we've talked about pay per view. Like, all right, if you want to see a certain can, parade or meeting, that. but it's it's terrible. You know, it's yeah. cumbersome. And it's almost it's impossible. Tough. Yeah. Okay, okay. If there's nothing else. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you.